Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode, we need to send over a scanner for Drez. We actually sent the scanner that was meant for Drez over to Duna instead. So we need to send a scanner for Drez, probably on the same type of launch. After that, I think I'm going to be in fulfillment mode. Mainly trying to get all of my missions in order. Uh, getting them to their locations so we can see what else we need to launch afterwards. After all, we don't know which of these might accidentally fail for some reason. I mean, uh, it's it's difficult to imagine that with my normal batting average that all of these will be fine. The one consideration is that we need to launch supplies and make sure that the mining station and the current station core are all set, but that'll occur after we take care of the missions meant for Duna. So basically, um, the Dres launch taking care of the Duna stuff, then supply missions to our stations, and then Explorer X, and then finally the missions to Jewel. That's the order of operations in grand scale, and that'll take a few episodes, but um, after that we will be ready to move on to phase two, if you will, or whatever the next phase is of our colonization, because then we'll be able to see what what resource we have in each of these locations and build upon that. Alright, so let me uh, prep up the Dress probe and I'll see you on the launch pad. Okay, I have time warped so that we have one hour left until the transfer window and that should give us enough time to line up with our our escape trajectory. Okay, throttling up, SAS is on. I guess we'll go for the nighttime launch. Mm. Yeah, I mean, how long is it gonna be till daytime? I don't know. So, might as well go for it. Uh, we've got ambient light adjustment and everything, so we can turn up the light if necessary. This is the. There's another scanner pro on the Strider SSL, so the specially modified short rocket for this particular launch. So, uh, again, we're gonna be recovering the booster section, but it's actually a smaller booster. Alright, so with that explained, here we go. Okay, pretty good so far. Now this booster is gonna carry us quite a bit of the ways to orbit much more than the other booster would for its payloads, you know, the um, SL version of Strider, which would end up much closer to the KSC. This one has got to be going much faster, and I suspect that really it shouldn't be surviving re-entry, but maybe it's a hardy sort of thing. I don't know. But stage recovery seems alright with it, so I guess we'll accept that and move on. This is going to get us to a very high apoapsis, unfortunately. I didn't uh, rotate quickly enough. Okay, separation and ignition. And fairing set. Okay, looking good. No problems for orbit, we'll have plenty left in this stage to give us an initial boost on our trans dres injection. Actually, uh, let's shut that off. I think uh, 200 kilometers is quite enough. And we won't boost our periapsis to nearly that high. Uh, such a small planet Kerbin is. Okay, I think we'll keep it as is right there. 246 by 103. Very elongated, but uh, yeah, that'll be fine. Let me plot for Dres Transfer. Okay, it took quite a lot of doing, but we've got an encounter at 810 kilometers. The first burn will be 1710 meters per second, and the second burn about 500. 
uh, the second burn being the mid course plane change it is a plane change um, yep we are gonna be correcting inclination the hard way so anyway this is in 28 minutes so I'm gonna line up with it and then we're going to head out doesn't seem too bad it's about 2200 meters per second we've got nearly 7000 on here so we should have enough to get into orbit around Drez without fail so that is positive okay I think we should start out about now yep let's go LV-909 first and then we've got a Rock Max 48-7S and that stage has more than enough to get us finished with this burn and also the mid-course plane change and probably also the burn we need to do to get into orbit around Drez. Hopefully. But just in case we do have the fuel on the probe itself. The total situation looks like this. So the probe itself has 2,000 almost. The, this stage here has more than 4,000 as you see here. Okay, separation and ignition. So unfortunately that LV-99 stage is going to be one of those stages that's just going to be floating around high carbon orbit. Okay, getting close to the end of this in pretty short order. This is a pretty quick burn considering everything. Good acceleration, you can see we've got 1.3 G's there. Okay, and we'll follow it out, I think. Uh, the encounter is pretty touchy. Let's see how it actually shapes up. Ah, you see it's off now. Okay. Well, let's see if we can tweak it at that mid-course plane change or not. Let's let's do the re uh, mid-course plane change again. I see it's 67 prograde, negative 491 retro uh, normal. Sorry. Um, I doubt that will get me the same results because yeah it was really really touchy yeah it doesn't even show an encounter there now okay we'll be going a little bit fast uh, this is almost home and I mean it's almost 180 degrees from there but obviously we're overburning a bit because of Drez's uh, eccentric orbit okay we have an approach at 227 kilometers right there with that big course adjustment, that should be alright. It costs 18 meters per sec. Well, it costs 518 meters per second. It wasn't exactly 500 before. So, okay, well, we'll just point to the node, which should be mostly an inclination change, so our solar panels will be in a good position. So, I'm not planning to send anything else to Dres except for the scanner. Not until we see what we can really do there. Oh, the alarm is going to happen. Okay, let's get rid of that. I haven't decided what to do about Space Tug Gamma and its asteroid yet. We'll take a peek at that, but I don't have any good feeling about what to do with it. Probably just leave it alone. That contract... Well, let's see if that contract is still there. I don't know. Okay, we have the planned encounter. I'm just going to add the alarm for the maneuver. Okay. And that'll occur right in the middle of our Duna stuff. I guess that's convenient. Okay, uh, let's check up on Space Tug Gamma. Okay, well, instead of trying the Duna thing that I had plotted, uh, which probably wouldn't have done much anyway, the, the Duna boost would have gotten us a little bit of Delta V, but after that we'd be pretty much lost. Um, we might as well aim for Jewel directly, and knowing that we probably don't have enough Delta V, once we get it boosted up, we'll have something else rendezvous with it to finish the job. So we'll see how much Delta V we need for it after that. Because uh, either way, we're probably going to be burning about this much Delta V. Uh, Duna doesn't give enough of a boost, and Dreshir doesn't either. So one way or another, we're going to burn about as, uh, as much Delta V as we have here. But this is enough to boost the asteroid out of the system. Now again, it is, uh, well, we're focused on Jewel right now. The entire vehicle is 480 tons, and so that's what we're trying to deal with here. And, uh, yep, we've already got uh, this thing with four nukes 
attached to it, and then this one with one. We'll use the four nukes first, just because I don't want to... I mean, uh, obviously, uh, using the one would uh, reduce the mass, but the, the mass of that isn't a huge contributor, really. Um, and I want to accelerate a little bit faster than that. Okay, so, yep, uh, 39 days. That uh, still makes this the next thing, so let me add that alarm. And uh, we'll time warp to that and uh, deal with this particular boost, even though it won't get us to full transfer, so we'll have to wait around a bit. Um, trouble with that... Potentially, there's, there's some potential trouble with that. Because we'll already be boosted in this direction. We'll have to wait until Jewel is in the right sort of location so that we boost there again. I don't know how much time we have on the contract. Let me pop into Mission Control to see how much time we have left in the contract. If we have quite a number of years, then it's fine. If it's short, then we might need to send something out before... Well, I mean, at least uh, sooner rather than later to give this extra Delta V. It's only seven years. I don't know if Jewel will be quite at the right place. I guess so. I guess it will be fine. Seven years is probably enough time. The thing about this contract is, while we can deal with the fund loss, barely, I mean, you know, we gotta lose more than half of our funds, the reputation hit, I don't know how to deal with that. I mean, uh, that's 2,112 reputation. We could get Exploring Paul, Exploring Jewel, Exploring Bop, it looks like these will make up for it. But I, I really don't know what the scale is on here, so... Yeah, it's gonna be a huge reputation hit and fun hit all together. And, but I don't know if we can finish this within our deadline. Let's see if there's another Class D asteroid or hanging around that we can aim for next. I don't think the one that we've got right now is going to work out. We'll try and boost it uh, based on our current uh, maneuver and we'll see how that goes. But I don't know if we can get something else to it and actually get it to Jewel in time in these 7 years and 172 days. Well, checking the asteroids we've got here, uh, there's Class C, Class E. All of these, these unknown objects are not the right class. So those don't do us any good. The only Class D over here is this one, which we are tracking, but it doesn't have an encounter with Kerbin. We'd have to grab it in interplanetary space. It is in a okay sort of orbit to try and grab it. But if we can get that in time, we can probably get the one that we already have in time as well. So that's the rub there. Okay, anyway, let's get back to... We'll, we'll time warp through these 39 days, have space to gamma, do that boost, and, and we'll see what we can do after that. Okay, well, this is going to take a long, long time with these nukes. Now, we're, we don't have enough to do the whole 2,400 meters per second, obviously. So, uh, we're probably going to end up doing about 1,200. Anyway, I'll come back to you once it's done. I'll show you, you uh, it's starting out. Make sure we're pointing in the right direction. We've got these four activated. Give it a little test burn to make sure we're controlling from the right direction. Yeah, we are. And you can see how long that's likely to take. Okay, let me just run it. Okay, well, I'm gonna walk away and do something else. It's gonna have to expend all the fuel anyway. And so I'll come back, flip it around, have this one burn after detaching that one, and see where it goes. Okay, I just saw the stage go out. We've we've covered about 800 meters per second. So now, I'm gonna control from here. Where is the probe core here? I guess we can control from the clamp, right? Yeah, control from here. That spins it around. Okay, but I'm also going to tell this clamp to release now. Uh, no, no, no. That. Release. Oh darn, this thing doesn't have any mop propellant left. Well, it's still got the reaction wheel. And I guess we can use this one's mop propellant to move it away. Though it probably doesn't need too much help with that. Yeah, it doesn't need too much help with that. It's got all the mop propellant though.
Well, I guess it can hang around. Theoretically, it could be refueled, though I can't imagine why we'd need to or want to. It's pretty far out here. So right now, Smart ASS is automatically turning this towards the maneuver node. And then we've got 262 meters per second left. This, this is wrong now. Um, it's, I guess, pointed in the right direction. But the maneuver itself is incorrect as far as delta V concerned. So we'll get about a thousand meters per second done and what that'll look like is well not too much different from where it is right now. You can see it's somewhat further than the orbit of Duna. Unfortunately the amount it would take to actually rendezvous with Duna was about the same as what it would take to get to Duna orbit anyway. So yeah, that's why we've gone for this decision. It's a long way off from Jewel though. Okay, let's activate this engine and go. Okay, so this is done. I guess I'll just keep this attached to the asteroid since otherwise we'll just have more stuff floating around. I mean, for now, we'll keep it uh, here, throw down, and, well, here is what our orbit currently looks like. It's it's not that far into the whole thing, really. Yeah, we'll have to do some more work to boost this up. Currently, its orbit is about 200 days, the period is. So, I guess, uh, I mean... You know, the maximum amount of time to get in sync with it won't be too bad. Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll be able to transfer some more stuff to this asteroid and perhaps boost it along. But I'll have to work out exactly when to do that, and I don't know right now. So uh, we'll leave this here for now. I'll, um, I'll create an arbitrary node. Right now we're over here. I suppose the logical thing will be to create a node here. We definitely want to pay attention to it uh, well before that point. But, yeah, uh, that, that's just to remind me so that I can create an alarm. Oops. Never used that window yet. Don't know what it's for. Okay, so, yeah, we'll wait on that until we finish everything else. So that's how it's going to work. So next, the Duna missions. Actually, uh, I want to supply the mining station first. So let me get the mining launch done, and then we can focus on Duna without worrying about that particularly. And maybe we should launch to Kerman Station Core as well. Okay, I'm going to do the resupply missions to Kerman Station Core and the mining station in a moment. But first, I noticed that there was the gold bug here in all of the TAC life support warnings. And so I decided to uh, move Dan Me Kerman back to... Uh-oh. Uh... The heck? Hmm. Well, I guess I should have expected this coming eventually. Uh, let me try and reload the persistent file and fix this, maybe. Yeah, I don't think I can allow this to happen. But I don't know if uh, if I can't switch this safely now. If we've gotten to the point in this save where I can't switch to the moon base, I don't even know if I can evacuate them safely. I, I think uh, Danmi here is going to be destroyed. But yeah, let me try and reload the persistent file, come back in and see if the same thing happens again. Hopefully not. Okay, well, here we go again. Gold bug is there. That uh, I had zi uh, zipped up the save file after doing that part, and before we started the next phase of things. So um, yeah, let's let's try this. Let's see what happens. Initially, nothing seems to be wrong, but that was true last time as well. And then it all glitches out. Yeah, it's still glitched out. Um, next course of action, I think. Uh, let me try and delete all things. I have restarted the game, by the way.
I re I did restart the game. Uh, let me try and clear up some debris, and also I'll just delete any vehicle that doesn't have a Kerbal in. So, like the Helmet Lander, um, the Light Tower was already very glitchy. And maybe even the Moon Master, even though I like that vehicle, maybe I'll keep the Moon Master temporarily. Yeah, so let me clear up some debris and some vehicles that we're not using anymore in an attempt to at least keep the Kerbals safe. Well, unfortunately, there's no actual debris at the site. Uh, you can see it's pretty clear here. I've got just debris selected. Um, that's the actual site. So there's no debris on the ground there. I've deleted the, um, the light tower and the um, helmet miner. Uh, I'm thinking about the moon master. But, and then, of course, we've got the emergency hab. But the emergency hab is... Well, it's there for a reason, first of all, and it's the most likely place to move these guys. But uh, also, it's uh, out of render range of the base. So, in theory, it shouldn't be uh, doing any physics stuff at the same time. Um, yeah, well, what can I do? Uh, well, we'll try it again. So, I've deleted stuff. Let me uh, zip it up again with those things deleted. And then uh, we'll try this again, and if it doesn't work, uh, well, I'll think about that at that time. Again, everything seems alright at first. Unfortunately, I can't get rid of anything else except for the Moon Master. Oh, there it goes. Because it's all connected to the base, right? That, the Hamburger is connected to the base. Uh, the Pill is connected to the base. spontaneously explodes even the parts in midair that aren't actually colliding with anything explode nothing survives except for well that little bit there hmm emergency app is fine but uh, um, okay well let me reload the persistent file and it might be the case that Dami Kerman might have to sacrifice himself. I don't know what else to do. I'll take suggestions. But I'm going to proceed with... I'm going to leave these guys alone. Proceed with the resupply missions. And uh, if I, uh, I'll take a look and see if I have enough time to do something with the Duna missions. But this is quite a disaster here. And uh, I'll be looking for suggestions. I'll be looking for suggestions. So I'm gonna reload the persistent file with the um, those the light tower and the helmet miner deleted. But it doesn't seem like that's going to be enough. Okay, well let's focus on the Kerbals that we can help for now, and that means the Kerbin Station Core as well as the. Carbonite Mining Station, there is the gold bug that I was trying to help with that single crew member in there. Uh, can't quite get to that. So I'm going to aim for the Carbonite Mining Station with this one first, because uh, that's the harder one to get to, and actually the first one to run out of supplies. And then we'll uh, do a launch for Carbon Station Core. This is the mid-range resupply mission, and so it's got plenty of Delta V to get to any of these locations so I'll launch one right now and quickly do the mission and then hopefully launch the other one quickly as well okay here we go now of course this is the Strider SL that we are launching on okay passing above the cloud layer everything looks good We've got uh, 36 seconds left in the booster stage and then it's a skipper after that. Okay, well past the speed of sound now. Eight seconds to go on the SRB. As usual, our vernier control thrusters are gonna run out first. I'm not gonna maneuver a while. We're only on the SRB since I can't anyway. It doesn't have gimbling. Okay, set. And okay, well those went off in a weird way. Ignition. And we'll reorient quickly to a lower pitch.
Well, it looks like the little fairings didn't actually destroy the SRB this time, but still a dodgy business there. I didn't use the fuselage fairings. Missed that little bit because they're not saved as part of the subassembly yet. Okay, separating these fairings. Okay. They, they definitely collide with each other. If this was a longer vehicle, that would have been a problem, but it isn't. It isn't, and we're okay. Lots of supplies here, as you can see, and we only have one Kerbal on the Carbonite Mining Station. I think it's Bill or Bob. I will aim to deorbit this stage. I'm not going to bring the skipper into orbit. We don't need that extra space junk. Definitely not anymore. I mean, it looks like this save is uh, getting close to its limit, probably. The persistent file is about 12 megabytes, I think. Let me check. Oh, scratch that. 15 megabytes. 15 megabytes. I don't know if that's large or small. Don't have any point of comparison except for my own saves. I mean, part of the problem is that I'm also hitting the RAM limit, as you know. I've tried OpenGL. doesn't work uh, with this particular install. It works otherwise, just not with this install. Um, and DirectX doesn't help. Uh, DirectX 11 doesn't help much either. Um, we're at 3.27 gigabytes of RAM right now and generally it crashes at about 3.3, 3.4 and this is a fresh restart in order to launch this so I, I didn't do anything before trying to launch this so basically I get one launch in and that's it I have to restart the game so that's sort of a problem anyway I'm gonna let this stage uh, re-enter press spacebar there one more time Okay, and then we've got this LV-909 stage to uh, kick us for a bit. We'll wait till apoapsis. And this will handle the transfer to the moon, and then we'll uh, do all the moon stuff with this. Uh, the fuel here. Okay, uh, 101 by 99, and let's transfer over to the moon. Okay, I think this will do this approach our periapsis here is 54 kilometers. The mining station is actually in a very tight orbit, uh, 30 by 34. And right around here, we'll do the actual burn to uh, match up with it. Uh, so we'll do the inclination change as well as getting into orbit at the same time. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do it like that. So there's no way to do the inclination change earlier, not, not in a definite fashion. Uh, we've got enough Delta V anyway, so it'll be alright. Okay, we're coming close to the end of the burn, but we're a little bit off. Uh, I started the burn quite a bit late. I didn't realize this stage took five minutes to burn, so... Yeah, we're, we're off. Let's see how we're doing. Hmm, looks like we're already going in the wrong direction, aren't we? We'll keep it loose because we want to phase with the target. So I'll go to 50 kilometers again. Okay, so there we go. All right, let's head over to the moon. Okay, let's control from uh, this docking port. And now we can continue. Well, now our closest approach distance is going up, but we still got 12 degrees of relative inclination, so I guess I'll continue correcting this. We are just changing inclination now. Oh well. You know, uh, our inclination is not being helped. I guess we're too far away from the node now. Okay, uh, let me plot a new thing here. Yeah. Okay, well that's a start. Let's let's go around a bit. 
And then over on the other side, I'll bring this portion of the orbit down, I think. That's two kilometers. All right, 0.5 kilometers. I'll go for that at that location. That'll be fine. Okay, looking good on approach. Tilt a little bit wrong here. This is pretty big compared to the station. Might be that the station is rotating slightly. And I'm not seeing it properly because uh, of that rotating section there. Well, the target marker is definitely not right. Yeah, that's part of the problem here. And yes, the station is rotating. Okay, that's why I'm messing up. You, uh... Oh, right, there's no operational SAS modules. Joy. And again, the target marker isn't going to help. Um... Bill is properly worried and probably should be. We have no control over this. I mean, we have control control, but not uh, st stability control. Oh, uh, maybe... I don't know. Kill rotation? Okay, uh, so smarty has to, oh wait, we have to control this thing and make sure it doesn't smash into it while this is going on. Okay, well maybe smarty SS can handle that side and kill rotation while I do this. Just a little bit fast. Bump, and let's just take stuff off. Okay, we are attached. And now this mining station has, well, 2,179 days worth of food, water, and oxygen. Congratulations, Bill. You're going to be here for a while. Okay, so, um, well, let's do another one of those, this time for Kerbin Station Core. And then that will be stuff all set, except for the gold bug. Everything should be well supplied right up to right right through our current mission alarm clock list and i guess that's the best thing we can do right now okay so one more launch okay here we go rendezvous with carbon station core shouldn't be too hard it's in the high orbit so uh, we're gonna get into low orbit so that we can uh, catch up to it i guess we'll uh, time up a little bit so that it's ahead of us in that case and so here we go, throttle up, SAS is on, and launch. By the way, uh, let's check our stages. That's the skipper stage that was supposed to be destroyed. We did recover the booster from that uh, supply launch. Otherwise, his, uh, these are other boosters that were recovered. I don't see the booster from the SSL, though. The probe, the Drez probe that we launched. I didn't, I didn't see that booster there. Hmm. Okay, we'll hold pitch here. Five seconds. Two seconds. Separation. Uh, well, those furrings do weird things. Ignition. Okay, we'll... S well, this is a little bit early to separate fairings, actually. Oh, wait a bit. We really didn't need the LV-909 stage. We're not transferring this to some other location. 
Perhaps we'll transfer the fuel to the station, I suppose. Have it tag along. Though that's got to make it cumbersome for the RCS units, which aren't really balanced for having the LV-909 stage attached. Got to try and make some sort of tangency there. Looks like we're going to be quite a bit far off, and the target's behind us. Okay, well, let's overburn then. We've got a lot of Delta V. There, we'll go for that intersect point, though I have to remember that the LV-99 stage has five minutes of burn time, so let's not wait around to match velocities with the target once we get there. Okay, up we go. I'm actually going to uh, let this stage loose so that it crashes back into the atmosphere. So, off it goes. And... Okay, there we go. You know what? I want this stage to re-enter as well. I'm going to use this stage to do everything else. I think I have enough Delta V here to take care of it. Uh, yep. Alright, that's my plan. Okay, I'm gonna control from here. Okay, now where does that leave us? Facing one of the docking ports? Doesn't look like it. So it's sort of like that, and we are coming in where? Oh, there we are. Yeah. Um, maybe I can turn on this axis. Yeah, that will help. At least Milner seems to be a pilot, or there's some sort of remote controller on this thing. Okay, we've got a bump and connection. So now Milner Kerman has also 2,000 days worth of food, water, and oxygen. No problems there. Milner looks happy. So now, uh, well, well, folks, uh, I'll leave it to you. Um, we will be able to do the these Duna. I guess that's getting it into Duna sphere of influence before. The gold bug has an incident, let's say, but not long after, and I don't know if uh, we can finish up all we have to do with these missions before that's going to get to be a tight situation. So any suggestions would be helpful at this point. I don't know what I can do. So I'm assuming that uh, unless, unless our Kerbal and the gold bug can spontaneously walk out and get to the base, that Kerbal is done for, but even if the Kerbal gets to the base, probably all three Kerbals at the Kerbatat are done for. But that's 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 who we're risking right now. Out of all the people that we've we've uh, deployed, it's uh, three Kerbals at risk at the base. It's possible that arriving at the base with a ship might prevent any sort of loading error, but it's more likely that once the ship enters render range of the base 2.3 kilometers the same sort of explosion chain will happen so that's what I'm assuming but if you have any other information that would be helpful we might delete the moon master but considering deleting the other vehicles didn't seem to help at all um, I'm not I don't think that's gonna be very helpful so that's where we are at and that's my uh, that's that's the most distressing thing so far. And uh, well, I'm going to have to if I do another colonization series, and I'm thinking real hard about it eventually, uh, because I've learned a lot in this, and I could do a lot better. Uh, we could start out with uh, some decent launchers and uh, with stage recovery, and work from there. And we can focus on the right sort of construction that we should be doing. Maybe throw in planetary base ink as well. 
depending on how much RAM we have. Probably uh, I could do without some of the parts I initially put in here. That's another thing I put in a lot of, I put in like near future parts that I'm not really using and stuff like that. Well, I used once and can't delete because uh, they're all hanging out. And now that they're part of vessels, I can't delete them. But I didn't really need them. So yeah, it's sort of like that. Okay, so lots to think about and I'll work on it on my end as much as possible. Yeah, can you tell I'm depressed about this? I, I don't like the idea that I've got uh, potential kerbals in danger. But anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.